was a wonderful show. And in a sense, I felt uh, I was disappointed that I had had a stroke during the filming of that show because uh, I kind of felt that there was the possibility of legitimizing my own self, my own character or something I wanted to play with that character on uh, Sports Night that I never got an opportunity and I'd never had an opportunity prior to that. Benson was certainly a character that I loved. A lifetime kind of gift. But again, Sorkin's writing for uh, Sam Jaffe was just amazing to me. And I really was looking forward to going into a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, sixth season and opening a character like that up. But I didn't get the opportunity. Well, okay, we'll just... Well, the morning I, uh, the morning of the stroke, I think I woke up with a sort of foreboding not the, not of a stroke, but something wasn't quite right. And I had a routine that I followed. I'd wake up, go uh, take my daughter Rachel to school, which was some 15 miles away. But everything used to go smooth and whatnot. So this morning I woke up and thought of having my wife take Rachel to school. I don't know, for some reason I just... Physiologically, I just didn't, I felt out of, out of sorts, sort of. And, uh, but I took her to school, came back to a haunt that some guys and I had over at Jerry's Deli at, uh, is it Coldwater? Yeah, Coldwater and Ventura. And we'd, we'd come in there and we'd, there were about four or five guys, and we'd come in there and we'd sit and uh, talk and trash whoever was doing better than we were in the business. And uh, that was part of the ritual. And then after that, I would get up and, you know, drive down to uh, Disney to work. I was doing sports night at the time. And so this particular morning, I came back through uh, cold water and went to my regular seat at the restaurant and sat and we talked, Johnny Dark and I and uh, John Mendez and a couple of other fellows. And uh, I got up to leave about an hour later. Excuse me. About an hour later and uh, I headed for my car, but then I had to turn back because I remembered that I didn't park the car in that direction. I parked the car in another direction. So I had to make an about face and go in this other direction. And as I made the about face, I looked a little unsteady, at least to the guys at the table. And they said, what's the matter, Bob? And I said, I don't know. Normally, I would have said, kiss me. You know, I don't even, what do you mean, what's the matter? I just made a little, you know, a little thing with my feet there. But I, again, I had this suspicion that this is not right. Something was wrong. My feet weren't doing what I thought they ought to. But at any rate, I, Johnny asked me, he said, do you want, want me to help you? And I said, yeah, well, come on, yeah. So as they're helping me out the door, and I'm beginning to walk funny, one of the guys who was, would normally have come 
was just now arriving, and he yelled out, saw me, them holding me on either side, and I'm coming through the door, and I'm walking very funny. And so he says, does this mean I shouldn't try the veal? So uh, then I, they were taking me down to my car, and literally on both sides of me, and I needed it. And I couldn't figure it out. I, I really w didn't know what was happening. So as I got down to my car, it was apparent that uh, I shouldn't be driving. Someone of them said, you're not going to drive this car. I said, I have to drive. I'm in no condition to walk. <laughs> so I drive the car, I get on the, what, the 34, and it diverges there and goes, the 34 and the 110 diverge there at, sort of at cold water. And I get on the other side of, I get on the Ventura side, so it goes straight down to Disney, and I get down there. And I had just bought a lovely STS, a Cadillac, white, and it was just gorgeous. And it, you know, it was like a, the console was like a plane. And I was just looking forward to cranking this baby up. And I'd had it for about two or three days. So I got on down to the studio. By the time I got to the studio and tried to get out of the car, I was really in bad shape, and I tried to, because as I got down there, there are buildings on either side, and people looking out the window, and I'm kind of shy about, about all this, and I try to figure out a way not to look disabled as I get out of the car, because my parking space was right there at the building. But there was no way I could hide it. When I got out of the car, I looked. It was, it was, you know, an awful looking sight of trying to get get into the building and up the stairs. But I did. I finally got into the building and up the stairs. And what had been happening was that I was losing the energy to control those muscles. So when I got upstairs, I got in my dressing room, then I had to come back down, go into makeup, and I got back upstairs. And as I got back inside the dressing room this last time, I was uh, in almost, you know, full of rest. But I funny i i didn't think stroke i don't know i don't know how stupid i could have been but i didn't think anything i geez this is funny not even when i found that i couldn't get my clothes on and off and somehow in my mind i kept thinking if i can just get my clothes on get down do the scene everything would be all right but of course it wouldn't have been all right because after I tried to get my pants on, I found, you know, I had two legs in one side of the pants. <laughs> and they, they kept ringing because I was late, because it was taking me so long. And then I fell over in the floor, and I couldn't get up. But I didn't feel bad. I didn't feel... It never dawned on me that I was having a stroke. So then uh, they finally came upstairs and knocked on the door and said, Bob, are you all right? And I said, uh, no. Contrary to what I normally would say, no, I'm all right. Leave me alone. Go on about your business. But I, they said, are you all right? I said, no. So they opened the door and hustled me to the couch in my dressing room, and they said, what's your doctor's name, et cetera, so forth and so on. I gave them that name. 
And uh, so they came back with the news that I should, uh, they should get me over to St. Joe, and it's a short distance, get me over to St. Joseph's Hospital, because um, from what they had told him, he determined that I perhaps was, in, was having a stroke. So then we went over to St. Joe, and uh, I was up on the gurney there, trying to look inconspicuous. Of course, everybody said, I bet you what's that? Hey, what the, the, what, what the hell's wrong with him? What is he doing? Because my, you know, my face was uh, contorted or what I, whatever. And uh, so they came back and said, you're having a stroke. I said, I can't be having a stroke. I work for Disney. He, he doesn't allow it on the job. So I, that's what that was like. So how, how did they handle it on the show? I mean, I know, but I mean, if you could tell me in your own words. Well, as when I went to the hospital and they said, you know, they were going to keep me, of course. I still had the idea that, well, no, I don't have to stay, do I? Can I go home, et cetera? They said, no, you, no, come on, get out of those clothes and do this, that, or the other. And so I was there for two or three days. My wife came down. We uh, called her at her job, and she came. And while we were talking about the whole incident and trying to figure out because I'm looking down that long corridor and things are just closing off. I, I see, you know, actor has stroke. Well, yeah, I saw all kinds of stuff. And, uh, but then we were talking two or three days later. I'm still in the hospital in the bed, so on and so on. And, uh, my daughter came to see me, and so she came up to the bed, and I, she said, how you doing, Daddy? And I said, oh, I'm, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. And of course, she didn't take my word for it. The room was full of people. And so I saw her go behind s several people and look back at me, thinking that I didn't see her because she wanted to get her a better look for herself. How old was she at the time? She was, uh, what was she? She was 11. And uh, so my wife and I were talking about it subsequently, maybe a day or so later, and she, she came up with the idea that perhaps they could write the stroke in. That way I wouldn't have to pretend that I had not had a stroke. It was just part of, staying on the job would be part of the rehabilitation. And that's how we wrote it in. How did Sorkin react to that idea? Was that something he had considered or? No, there didn't seem to be any, oh well, well, he fought for me. I think uh, somebody said, well, we don't want that. We don't want sickness of the weak, et cetera, et cetera. And he fought for me. He fought to write it in and uh, that sort of thing. He stood by me. It was a very elegant solution as well as being a very compassionate way to, to sort of acknowledge, keep you on, and also address the issue within the body of the, the context of the show. Mm -hmm. um, other shows have had similar things, either an actor passes away or something else happens, and there are different ways to handle that. Mm -hmm. What was the reaction of the people on the show and also generally when you returned to the, to the stage? I think there was, uh, I think there was a kind of relief that I was coming back and that we could pick up where we left off. Uh, I think everybody was happy that I'd come back. It was a strong character, a lot of feistiness. 
to, to that guy, especially when, when you came back from in the stro in the episode returning from the stroke. I mean, there was just like, okay, I'm back, you know? <laughs> now what are you gonna do about it? Um, did you feel that way also? Yeah, you know, uh, still, uh, even at that late date, I had not acknowledged that I'd had so life-threatening an idea or as, as so life-threatening a occurrence happened to me. I, it wasn't until a few days later that I actually acknowledged that I had a stroke and what it, what the implications and ramifications of that were. Because one morning I decided that, well, I don't have a stroke and I'm not going to walk as if I had one. And I fell on my can immediately. <laughs> if Sam Jaffe had not had a stroke, I think the life of Sports Night might not have been so easily shortened. Because I think he was well loved by the audience and I was the only character that the audience, the television audience, knew. I mean, they knew me, they, it wasn't Benson I was doing, but they knew Robert Guillaume, so I think there was a certain built-in affection for that character that we sort of lost when I had the stroke. There was also sympathy, though. Mm -hmm. But also, when uh, we came back with that in the storyline, I think the show might have achieved, it, I think it was an opportunity to uh, address the real audience in a way that transcended something in the show. I mean, because we had an opportunity to show people that, well, there is a life, there is life after a stroke, and it need not be the end of the world, and that sort of thing, and we didn't have to uh, abide by late 19th century ideas of what happens to you when you have a stroke.